Roll the montage. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're in Nishoping, a small yet historic town on the eastern coast of Sweden, where the past meets the present in the most intriguing ways. Nestled on the shores of the Baltic Sea, Nishoping's story is rich and varied. The town's origin dates back to over a thousand years, when its name first appeared on records around the 13th century. Back then, it was a bustling medieval market town, protected by the imposing Nishoping Castle. The castle, which still stands today, although not to its former glory, was the backdrop for one of Sweden's most infamous events the Nishoping Banquet of 1317. Let's check out this city and check out the mysteries of this beautiful castle and what else is going on in the city. No one thing is that I'm super hungry and that it is time for lunch. So let's go find something Swedish and enjoy some of the local cuisine. Now Scandinavian food emphasizes simplicity, freshness and a connection to the land and the sea. Dishes often feature ingredients like fish, potatoes, berries, and dairy products. These products reflect the resourcefulness of the people who have thrived in a challenging northern environment for generations. I stumbled upon a restaurant just a little bit up from where I was, and the food looked kind of good. Although there was one problem, I couldn't understand the menu. How's the day today? It's good. It's yeah. warm, isn't it? It's like 27 or something. I'm really glad that I had a little bit of help from the from the people that work at this place. This place looks beautiful. If you didn't know that a lot of Swedish people, probably 90% of them speak English and speak English really, really well. So I think even in school, it's part of their curriculum. That's what the most Swedish thing is to eat. I have got uh, salmon with uh, potatoes and a lemony sauce. I've also got some Swedish beer. Nazdravi, school. Cheers, my friends. Oh, that's good. Can't wait for the food to come out. Now this food came out so really quick, so I'm not sure if it's the style of the way they cook food in Sweden or it's like, somebody tell me in the comments, is food normally so fast? It looks great. There's no way that's so good. Normally I'm a crispy skin salmon kind of guy, but that salmon is so well cooked, so juicy, so moist. And I think on top there's some pickled veg, which is uh, not too outlandish after living in Czech Republic, because everything's pickled. But that lemony sauce is like filled with mustard, fresh herbs. It's so like zesty and creamy and delicious. It, it feels like a meal you could eat outside in the sun, relaxing. Enjoying a beer. So far, great food. And the beer is really tasty too. Quite crisp. Not too hoppy. Seems like something you could drink a lot of in one time. Ciao. This place behind me, scene of the crime. Delicious lunch. You gotta check this place right out. Food was delicious. Let's do some exploring. First, I need a haircut. Right behind me is the hair place. I'm hoping to look like a young Brad Pitt, maybe Leonardo DiCaprio afterwards, see how we go. Have you not been in one of those? I've never been in this before. No? No. <laughs> okay, the haircut is fresh. I'm feeling good. I can feel the wind on my neck finally again. I just wanted to point out the funny name of this place. Bastard Burgers. <laughs> also some great burgers too. Right, first stop, stop Nishoping Theatre, or Theatre in Swedish, I think. Now this stone marble with its two floors has a lot of stories to tell. Built in 1883, it stands defiantly in the middle of what is now known as Theatre Parken, a structure reborn not once but twice, first in 1902 and then again in 1929. This isn't just a theatre, it's a testament to resilience and reinvention. Before 1890, it was a bustling livestock market. Imagine the chaos, the smell and the life. The last market, devoid of animals but still rich in human drama, took place in September 1902. Today, Nishoping Theatre stands not only as a venue for performances, but as a witness to the evolution of its surroundings. It's a place where history and culture intertwine, where every stone and stucco detail whisper tales of the past to those who listen closely. There's some really beautiful nature around everywhere. 
it just seems like it's all nature and then Swedish cities are like popped in the middle there somewhere but really cool also I need to find somewhere to pee and this seems like the worst place because there's lots of people over there but Nishoping isn't all just about history and culinary delights the town is a canvas bursting with creative and artistic expression. Nishoping boasts a thriving art scene where workshops buzz with activity and local art pops up around every corner. The community embraces the idea that for every person riding high, another must be struggling. A reflection of society that's both poignant and thought provoking. Street art isn't really just tolerated here, it's celebrated. Each year, the town invests around 1 million Swedish crowns to expand and transform its urban art collection, adding fresh, dynamic pieces to invigorate the cityscape. One of the highlights is the large open graffiti wall, a space where anyone can pick up a spray can and leave their mark. This open-air gallery is a testament to the town's commitment of self-expression, creating cool vibes and a sense of artistic freedom that's palpable in the air. In Nishuping, art is more than just a decoration. It's a vibrant part of the community's heartbeats, a reminder of the power and importance of creative expression. We're just walking down the street here. We have found some cool looking buildings. The colors kind of remind me a little bit of Czech, like that pastel, pastel-y color. Some of them just have like cool shapes, like this one. It looks like, a, looks like some kind of castle or something. Basically making my way up the main street. Really windy, it's kind of warm, it's 27 degrees today. Looks like it's gonna rain, which I hope it really doesn't. But the streets are beautiful, the streets are quiet, and it seems like everyone's doing their own thing, at peace, just chilling. So, that's pretty nice. But we're about to head to like, one of the town squares, I would say. And here they have, I'm guessing, the city council house. Let's check it out. Okay, I've been practicing Duolingo for the last two weeks. Well, today, today's day 13, so not fully two weeks, but from what I've learned so far, I've learned that Stad means uh, city and Hus means house. Stad Hus. I'm assuming that it means council house, something like that. City's house. Let me know in the comments what you think. Am I wrong? I don't know. Am I Swedish? Definitely not. But I'm giving it a go. That's beautiful. I don't... What time is it? Okay, it's 3.02, so I'm assuming that it's, this is maybe an every hour thing. There's also another bell going off. Kind of overwhelmed by all these bell sounds. What do I do with my hands? My hands! Skiing houses, kids running in front of taxis, and a man probably trying to abduct the girl is a big no-no from here on. Okay, I'm kind of not sure where we are. But there is this really cool swing, and uh, I have a little craving for ice cream. But that's cool, we can wait. We seem to be in a beautiful, like, dammed area. Now, I'm not sure if they use the dam for electricity, or maybe the dam had some hydro-powered properties. But we're going to explore it. We're going to explore it for sure. And we're going to go that way. Nishoping is a town located at the mouth of the Nishoping Sorn, I hope I pronounced that correctly, I probably didn't, which is a river that flows through most of the city. The river helped with access in medieval times with trade. The name Nishoping translates roughly to new market and comes from two words, ni meaning new and shopping meaning market or in English we would say I'm going shopping. And you can see many cities with similar names around Sweden. So there's a lot of life around this river and plenty to see. Enjoy a great stroll down the river or even brush up on some history at different points in the city. Basically all I can hear here is water. So I think we're close. I think we're really close to it. Ah, I found it. Beside me here is a raging river of water. What a, what a cool little place. I definitely would not want to swim in there. We can actually see a few fishermen right up here. Hold on. And they're just, just in there. Right out of the rapid kind of white part. The really crazy, I'm probably going to drown part. And just outside of there must be where the fish are. But if you prefer to, you can actually buy fish from the restaurant I was at earlier. So much less work. The huge wheels. I'm assuming these wheels were made from the stonework uh, 
uh, from the old guys in the picture. <laughs> if, if you've come here for a little bit of history, this is probably the worst video you could ever watch. But it's, there's some cool big uh, wheels behind us. Now, I'm assuming this is either the hydro place, the old metalwork place, or the place that sells ice cream. Could be one of the three. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Wasn't an ice cream shop, but we will find ice cream down at the harbour, next to the murderous castle. Nishaping was considered a factory town already at the beginning of the 19th century, with clothing factories, shipyards and mills. A new and more diversified industrial area began at the end of the 19th century. It was accompanied by a strong population increase compared to other cities until about 1920. And even in 1950, more than 50% of the population were employed in industry. These little relics from the past showcase some of the rich history that Nishaping has. And although I don't know what these big wheels are because I didn't really read the posts, you can see that the history is still here. And it's something really nice to look at. I'm just gonna grab the camera. I forgot it back there. Behind me here we have the old clock tower. There's little to no... <laughs> Welcome back to Cody's Horrible Histories. Behind me we have a red clock tower. Woo! The views up here are insane. Let's take a little look around. It looks pretty interesting. I think. Let's get up here. We are at Vestra Klokstaplen, the clock tower in Nishoping, is said to be the oldest wooden building in all of the city and was built in 1692. But this is not the first face of this clock tower. This clock tower has burnt down like five times. It is lucky that it's still here. There are three bells hanging inside. The small bell was cast in 1785. The middle was cast in 1668 and the large bell was cast in 1675. From the beginning of the 20th century, the bell tower has also been used by the city's firemen. Although there's not much to show off the inside, we can definitely take a look at the outside and the amazing views you can see from up at, at this point. Okay, uh, we are... We're gonna go up there and just check it out. I know a very few places in New Shipping, but I know this is an old district and I think there was a massive fire that's destroyed most of this city, but it's like an old town area, we're going to walk through it and it goes to New Shipping Hulls, which is the old castle which is, with a cool story behind it. There is the harbour and also there is the museum, so maybe we can check all of them out. But this is the old town. You can see the road has that old feel about them. It's not the square cut cobblestones like normal, it's like real natural cobblestones. I really do like the houses in Sweden. They have that like weatherboard look and they have like cool, cool different sized roofs and just a nice, quaint, relaxed feel about them. So we've made it to the murderous castle, Nishopinghaus. This area first came under construction in the 12th century, where a square stone tower, or so-called fort, was built on a large rock at the mouth of the Soldermanland's largest river. The fort was intended to protect the city that grew up on the shore of the long Baltic Bay. When the castle became too small for the ever-growing city, a wall was built around the tower. Once this was completed, another wall was added, and finally an outer defensive wall was erected on the castle's land site. In the innermost castle yard, a castle was then built for the kings of the Bjalbolten dynasty. The first mention of Nishoping House dates back to 1266, when Magnus Bergeson became Duke of Saldemann's land and made Nishoping House's residence where he remained until his death in 1290. His son, Burya Magnusson, was to make history during Christmas in 1317. King Burya had two brothers, 
Voldemar and Eric, who 11 years prior had locked Berya and his wife away for two years. This Christmas party was thought to be a family reconciliation. However, Berya Magnuson had other ideas. After the Christmas celebration, Berya's men seized his two confused brothers and thrust them into the prison tower against their will. Their punishment? To starve to death. It took two months for followers of Voldemar, Valdemar and Eric to seize the castle and attempt to rescue their lords. Berya had thrown the key into the river to prevent any escape. By the time the castle was overthrown, the two brothers had died and Berya and his wife had fled. In the 1900s, it was said that a boy fished the key from the river, but there was no evidence to confirm that the key was from the castle. Nowadays, the key serves as a symbolic reminder of Nishuping's history and can be seen in various places around the town. Uh, I've climbed up <laughs> on a ledge a little bit and uh, there is a, a, I don't know what there. It seems to me there's a cell behind me. I'm not sure if one of the brothers lived here or the other, both of them together, but I can feel cold air coming from this hole. This hole. It's a little bit spooky, you know? But let's check out the rest of the place. I'm eager to get in. It's just this way, my friends. I don't know where we are, friends. We're in this pretty rundown looking castle. It's kind of nice to be in this part of history. I don't know what these pillars are doing. I'm sure they were holding up something back in the day. There seems to be some old construction here, maybe bricks. Could be the entrance to a house. Yes, definitely. There's some stairs here. Uh, I'm sure at one point in time, it was built up and something went on top of here. Yeah, my brilliant uh, skills of deduction. Welcome to Cody's history. <laughs> cool though, this place is huge. It's pretty rundown. But is it, it looks like a nice piece of history. Yeah. Subscribe! Now after such a colourful history, Nishuping Hus is now an open museum where anyone can come join. And even in the White Tower, they have exhibitions on which you can see nearly every day. Except for me, I was late. So we can only go inside this little building and check out what's inside. This is pretty creepy in here. You can go down the stairs. I didn't know this last time. Uh, which just seems like a little dungeon or something. Maybe it's the dungeon where the brothers were. Interesting, interesting. Pretty creepy though. And there's so much more up there. Let's check it out. Pretty far down. Look at my little feet here. And we are gonna check upstairs. Oh no. Oh, that sucks. But interesting enough, we got to go inside a little bit. Breathe some of that stagnant air. Yeah. Very nice. I love this old shit. And we can go check out the harbour, which I think is like just, just behind us. Let's go. Hello. Can I get a ice cream of some kind? Yes. <laughs> Probably, I don't know which one. Yeah, one of those two, please. British people are lovely. I'm always like so awkward. Like, do they speak English, do they not? But you normally, honestly, you just speak English and they, they understand. I've got a, a man got ice cream. I've got a roasted uh, almond and a salted caramel. And it's delicious. I'm gonna enjoy the shit out of this. Have a little walk down, see what else we can find. And, um, and then it's home time, my friends. What a beautiful day. Now the harbour is a cool place. It's like a perfect location. It's beautiful, it's quiet. There's food places everywhere. I saw a few bars. There's also like some fast food here as well. Even some fish and chips. I'm trying my hardest not to try it because I want something Swedish. But uh, it's fantastic. 
And this is, I guess, is the end of my vlog and the end of our travel through knee shopping. I, heard, I hope you got to see something cool, something you liked. Um, yeah, that's the end of it, I think. Maybe. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know yet. We haven't decided. I'm gonna walk back to town. Maybe we'll find something else. I don't understand what these things are. Maybe they're a seat, maybe they're a bench, but they don't look very comfortable for me. To me, made of fiberglass. Maybe it's a boat. There again, but now there's two of them. What are they? Someone in the comments right here, tell me what they are. Also subscribe. Comments, subscribe. Little bell thing. Cool.